The Georgia Senate campaign that could help, help decide who takes the Senate has been overtaken by a growing scandal for Republican candidate Herschel Walker. And the latest twist, more new reporting from the Daily Beast, that the unidentified woman accusing Walker of pressuring her to have an abortion and then paying for it is also the mother of one of his children. NBC News has not yet verified those allegations. Despite that, Walker again denying it all on conservative talk radio today and telling NBC News there is no truth to this or any other Daily Beast report. The candidate is back on the trail, and that's where we find NBC Washington correspondent Michelle Sindor in Wadley, Georgia. Also joining us today, NBC's Vaughn Hilliard in Phoenix, Vittoria Francesco Soto, Dean of the Clinton School of Public Service at the University of Arkansas, and former Florida Congressman David Jolly. So, Yamish Walker is going to hold this event where you are pre-positioned. You're in deep red Georgia. He's going to be there later this hour. Are we expecting him to address any of these new allegations? Well, Andrea, good afternoon. I am here in Wadley, Georgia, a deeply red part of this state. It's here that Senate candidate Herschel Walker is going to be holding a campaign event. That's what we're being told. It's been pushed back a few times here today, but we are expecting him to come. We're expecting him to talk a bit about these allegations that he paid for a woman carrying his child to have an abortion. He's been saying that that is a false claim, that it's a lie. Um, take a listen to what he told you, Hewitt, this morning. In this case here, they're saying, oh, some alleged woman, and now it's somebody that you used to know and you know so well and this and that, they're saying it. And I said, yeah, they can say a lot of things, but I know for a fact no one has ever told me or oh, I paid for an abortion and that, that never happened. So there you have it, Herschel Walker continuing to defend himself. He has, though, said that he's a sinner who has been redeemed. We do expect him to talk more about this and to say that this is really a, an attack by Democrats who do not want him to be the next U.S. senator from Georgia. We should note that this is a tight, tight Senate race. Georgia is a critical part of, this, of the Republican plan to try to take back control of the Senate. But also, we're hearing from some state Republicans in this state um, that maybe things are not going as planned for Herschel Walker. We had the lieutenant governor out um, just in the last 24 hours saying that there are some staunch Republicans who are feeling very rattled, he said, by this continuous flow, this drip, drip, drip of new information about this abortion allegation. But national Republicans are continuing to stick with Herschel Walker. We should also note that the woman who is claiming, making these claims, she told the Daily Beast that it's, quote, ridiculous for Herschel Walker to continue to deny it, but that's exactly what he's continuing to do. So I'm looking forward to questioning Herschel Walker when he gets here. And Andrea, hopefully I can tell you a little bit about it on the back end. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Yamish, thank you very much. Hope to see you later. And Vaughn, you are out in Arizona where there's a big debate tonight. You talked to Ted Cruz about Herschel Walker. Tell us what he had to say. All right, Andrea, when you're looking at the map, Rick Scott himself named Nevada and Georgia as Republicans' best to pick up opportunities to change the power in the U.S. Senate here. And that is where you see the likes of other states, including here in Arizona, where Blake Masters, national Republicans, have largely moved their fundraising away from Blake Masters to places like Nevada and Georgia to defend and help out and boost the candidacy of Herschel Walker. To give you an idea, Mark Kelly's operation or allies around him have spent five times what allies of Blake Masters have spent over the last two months since the August 2nd primary here to give you an idea of just how much Blake Masters, who is still very much in this race, has been outspent. And yesterday, Ted Cruz, the senator from Texas, was here campaigning for Blake Masters, and I was putting the question to him whether he would urge Republicans to shift their resources away from Georgia to places like Arizona. Take a listen to his re response. This is an effort from Democrats to hold on to power. Do you stand I, by Herschel Walker? I, I believe Herschel Walker is going to be the next senator. I think if you look at inflation, you look at crime, you look at illegal immigration, the people of Georgia are really unhappy with the path we're on. That's why they're going to elect a Republican. And it's and not going to stop them. The Absolutely. Hell yes. I want every Republican running for Senate in this country to win. You heard Ted Cruz make it very clear there. The ambition is to get Republicans the majority in the U.S. Senate, Andrea, and that includes sticking by the candidacy of Herschel Walker. That was classic Ted Cruz, Vaughn Hilliard, really. Uh, David Jolly, our Fish Read team points out that in the end, this is all about winning and retaking the majority. And sure. they have no, there's nothing they can do about Herschel Walker now. They can't change candidates. So 
they're going to stick with the guy, you know, who brought them to the dance. They are. Look, a, a high-risk decision by Herschel Walker to take the strategy of just denying, because there's still five weeks to go where more information could come out. But I think it's an indication that Republicans have said, we're going to ignore this, and we're just simply going to focus all of our attacks on Raphael Warnock in Georgia and Joe Biden across the country. Herschel Walker was never a vessel or was never a candidate running really on his credentials to be a U.S. senator. He was a vessel with name recognition and fundraising prowess that the NRSC could use to regain that seat. But here's the important thing, Andrea. We're watching to see, are Republicans going to stick with him? They will. But a move of only two to three points in Georgia sends Raphael Warnock back to the Senate for the next six years. And that's the critical thing. Does the the trust deficit now with Herschel Walker or the substance of the issue itself cause two to three percent of Republicans to switch their vote or to just stay home? If so, Herschel Walker has lost this race. And Victoria, let's talk also, while we're all talking about Herschel Walker dealing with his problems, uh, Republicans have been focusing on inflation and crime and other issues, not abortion, of course, which is also the Democrats' issue of this campaign. And now the gas pump, inflation, and prices up 10 cents just in the last week alone on the expectation that OPEC Plus would do exactly what they did overnight, which is the Saudis and Russia announcing big production cuts to keep their prices up. And there's a clear disappointment at the White House. This is going to hurt Democrats. This is going to be incredibly problematic, Andrea, for the White House, for the Democrats going into the midterm, because it can't get more direct. We all have to put gas in our cars. Uh, our produce, our goods are all affected by this. So this is a very, very hard hit. And I think it can hit in two different ways. I think one in terms of vote choice for those swing voters, those voters who quite haven't made up their mind yet, this may say, you know what, I like the Democrats, but I just trust the Republicans a little bit more on the economy, on inflation, which is what some of the polling, uh, recent polling has shown. The other thing that I worry it can do is it can decrease turnout. So midterms are notorious for being lower turnout elections, especially with key demographic groups in the Democratic Party. So apathy, frustration from these higher gas prices could make some Democrats who otherwise would have turned out stay home. So I think this is really problematic in all cases, aside from it affecting the most vulnerable in our society yet again after coming off the pandemic and the heavy hit that took. And Vaughn, Liz Cheney was also in Arizona last night at the McCain Institute in Tempe. And speaking about the threats that she believes the democracy is facing, let me play that. If you care about democracy and you care about the survival of our republic, then you need to understand, we all have to understand that we cannot give people power who have told us that they will not honor elections. Elections are the foundation of our republic, and peaceful transfers of power are the foundation of our republic. Uh, and, and we must have elected officials in both parties um, who understand and honor that duty and that responsibility. So how does that message play in the debate that you're expecting tonight between the Senate candidates? Right. I mean, look, Blake Masters has also been endorsed by Donald Trump. He is part of that slate of candidates that are going to be appearing alongside the former president in a rally on Sunday here. And you can expect Mark Kelly, the Democrat uh, incumbent, to make a case out of this tonight. This is going to be the sole single in, uh, single debate between these two candidates. Mark Kelly has consistently been up by uh, several points over the course of the last several months here at the same time. Uh, Arizona is far from being a conservative red state. He won it by just two and a half percentage points in 2020 here. Liz Cheney, we should know, this is a huge week in Arizona. There's a reason that Liz Cheney was on that stage just minutes after Ted Cruz was here and just days before Donald Trump and Mike Pence are here in the state because early voting begins in the state of Arizona just next week. The mail-in ballots are going into mailboxes next week. That is why the time is so crucial now here for not only the Senate candidates, but it's also these statewide candidates to get their messages out and to get those folks that are speaking 
out on their behalf out here. And Liz Cheney, she was also called out the likes of Glenn Youngkin and Ted Cruz for coming and campaigning for the likes of Carrie Lake here. Those folks that she refers to as these election deniers, knowing that those statewide candidates are advocating for individuals who are openly working, uh, uh, what, in her own words, against the Constitution here. Those are the stakes. And over the course of this next week, we can expect the focus to continue to be uh, uh, really high here in the state of Arizona. Andrea. Well, David, that's really the, the division in the Republican Party, Liz Cheney, Ted Cruz. And uh, yeah. let me give you another example. Newt Gingrich uh, speaking on Hannity, I guess, the other day about Herschel Walker. Let's watch. I think he's the most important Senate candidate in the country because he'll do more to change the Senate just by the sheer presence, by his confidence, by his deep commitment to Christ, by the degree to which he is, you know, he's been through a long, tough period. He had a lot of concussions coming out of football. He suffered PTSD. This is the former history professor and the, uh, the uh, ideological yeah. core of the, you know, the Gingrich Revolution, the contract with America. Yeah. Andrea, um, Herschel Walker was recruited to run in Sen in, for a U.S. Senate seat in Georgia because of his name and his fundraising prowess and because Mitch McConnell could manipulate him to be one vote for Mitch McConnell when he gets to the Senate, not because of any credentials he brings substantively. And that's the reality of it. It's an unfortunate fall for Newt Gingrich that he's left to defend this. And I think you'll see in the coming weeks evidence of that. The next five weeks will not be a campaign about Herschel Walker's credentials. It will be a vicious negative attack on Warnock that you're seeing across the country, on crime, immigration, and inflation. Republicans will attack, and that's how they'll try to get out of this.